I grew up in a machine shop. My dad was a machinist and a millwright and a cowboy and amongst other things. But uh, I, I grew up running a lathe and welding and all that. So I, it's kind of natural for me. I've always enjoyed hurting metal. I've got big machines to hurt metal with, and uh, I take great joy in that, putting them in the lathe, a big hunk of stainless steel, and cutting it to pieces, make a nice shiny piece out of it. I go back and forth between music and, and uh, machinery. I have, a, I have this cycle where I go back and forth. Uh, I get really interested in music and then machinery, but they're kind of blending now in my declining years where uh, the music and the machinery are all kind of one. I, and I've been lucky that the, the product that I make that is our bread and butter is a string bender. And so it is, it is actually mixing metal with, uh, with music. Well, I do, I start with the raw materials, stainless steel, aluminum, and uh, in some cases, titanium, brass and make all the parts myself. The only part that I don't make is the plastic back plate that I have a local fella do. There's, uh, I forget exactly how many components are in there, but there's quite a few, but there's, there's quite a bit of machine work in, in the unit and it has to be close machine. The parts are fit within thousandths of an inch so that they will wear uh, for a long time and, and so that the, the string bender actually intonates properly and handles properly and is smooth. And so I, I take pride in that. I, I've been doing this for 45 years now and I've got it down to a pretty fine process. I build all kinds of things in the shop. I've built rippers for caterpillar tractors, uh, cages for caterpillar tractors. I've built elevators, steam engines, boilers. I love steam love steam locomotives. I grew up in the age of steam locomotives, so I, I had some, uh, some contact with some of the larger locomotives that were built, and they instilled a love in, in me that won't die. X44 is a, a locomotive I'm building. I've built several steam engines over the years. This is the largest one that I've built, and uh, it's nearing completion. I'm just finishing the boiler with it. Uh, it's a 10-wheeler Stevenson valve gear modeled after a locomotive that there were quite a few of them that ran on our local railroad that runs from Eureka down to uh, San Francisco, the Northwestern Pacific. And uh, there were quite a few of these type of locomotives on that railroad. So you want to see my hooters. <laughs> well, this, this has been in the shop, so it's freezing cold and we're in a warm room, so it's going to start collecting moisture on it here pretty soon. But this is a five chime steam whistle. It's tuned in D minor seventh. It's made to operate on anywhere from 80 to 120 pounds per square inch. It's made for a, what they call a grand scale model locomotive, which is about quarter size, 15 inches between the rails or it could go on a, a steam launch, steamboat, or you could just annoy your neighbors with it. I've actually made every piece, including the, the little acorn nut here. Uh, everything has been made out of solid billet brass. Oh, it's my design. Uh, I actually um, I took uh, a polypropylene tubing and made uh, the length of the chambers so that they would be, I, I made a, a model out of polypropylene to get the, the notes correct. And then I was able to uh, scale that down to the, the brass whistle that you see here and uh, so that it would be in tune. And uh, I, I studied some of the charts that I found uh, that had record of some of the railroad's tunings. The minor tuning is uh, to indicate that there's something ominous about to happen if you get on the railroad. <laughs> I inherited from a gal who, uh, whose father passed away some banjos that he had collected and they, after his death they had been left somewhere where they got damp and they came apart and had mold on them and whatnot. And this young lady brought them to me for, um, for me to restore. She gave them to me and there, uh, I was Amazed to find out that uh, they were, some of them were British banjos that had been made uh, before the turn of the last century. 
in Great Britain. I didn't even realize that uh, Great Britain had so many banjo makers. There were over a hundred, a uh, hundred years ago that made five string banjos, four string banjos. And uh, this is one that is over a hundred years old. It's a premiere made on Newhall Street in Birmingham. And uh, I just uh, got it back uh, in operation for my wife, Star. Lovely banjo. And then this one here is uh, even more rare. There's only 30 banjos in existence that this manufacturer made, J. Clamp. Uh, in, and this was made in Newcastle on Tyne over a hundred years ago, just a gorgeous banjo. This guy was a cabinet maker and in his retiring years he made 30 banjos of which this happens to be one. The neck was all delaminated and I glued it all back together and was able to get it really straight and so this is a lovely banjo too. So it was a wonderful gift that this young lady brought. Isn't that wonderful? Just beautiful. Well, I'll play a little tune on this other banjo since I've got it tuned in open C. Thank you. There's another part, but no, I won't play that part. <laughs>